This is Just Ask George, exploring the universe of corporate finance and capital formation for your business enterprise. With merchant banker George Lovato Jr. and your host, David Wolf. Just Ask George, David Wolf here, affiliate banker, co dude with the head dude, George Lovato Jr. Happy Friday. And happy Friday. We're glad to We've see you. We've been off the air a little while. We took a little a hiatus. A uh, biatus. Because, we, because, yeah, biatus, because we've been uh, very busy. Yes. With many, 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 many wonderful clients. Exactly. And one of the things we're, we're thinking about and we want to share with you, and we've covered in uh, this subject matter in the previous show, is the turnaround. We're calling this the turnaround part two. And um, I think the, the, the overriding idea here is that many times uh, prospects and clients, business owners will approach BH Capital for funding in the form of a capital infusion. And uh, again, the setup is that in the years in doing merchant banking, George, you've, you've discovered that there's a whole lot more there as you peel back the onion uh, in a business situation, often pointing to what we call the turnaround. There's distress, there, there are issues right. and symptoms. So we're going to walk through a few points today and I'm just going to kind of throw them at you in the form of a question. We'll see how he, as a banker you handle these situations or how you tend to think about them or approach them with management. So one uh, that I'm sure it's familiar to many is um, th th there are debt facilities and they may be just running out of control and you may not be able to satisfy the requirements of your debtors as a business owner. Uh, how, how do you approach uh, that problem coming you, in? You, uh, you have to understand if how the company plans and budgets. If... Uh, if the, it's sort of a wild growth plan mm -hmm. and they're just sort of winging it as they go without understanding that, you know, growth happens, you know, in parallel with available financing. Sometimes you run across that business that just, you know, didn't manage its debt well or its availability, maybe for lines of credit or CapEx lines, so on and so forth. So you've got to, you want to look at that and say, hey, fellas, you know, how much planning is going into how you're controlling your growth. <laughs> <laughs> right. Plan, and, project, and plan, project, exactly. right back to your back, model. Right back to the model again. And what you have to do is make them understand that growth can't occur unbridled. Mm -hmm. It can't. Mm -hmm. It just can't. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Now, we talked about bankruptcy and spent considerable time on it. It is sometimes a forum for a business to do a turnaround absolutely uh, it is it is one where you know in this show we decided we talk about uh the non-bankruptcy turnaround right and right. how that how that works it does work mm -hmm. and you know guys like me come in uh knowing that bankruptcy may be an alternative right but a lot of times you can execute the turnaround and use a lot of the same methodology that you would in bankruptcy to turn a company around outside Side of it. The, yeah. And so, yeah. so it is some of the same mind, mindset examining how the business got in the position it, it did, uh, looking at what's working and what's not working mm -hmm. and looking at what their capacities are. Are they out of dough? Right. I mean, you know, right. how did they run out of money? Right. Um, are they not managing their cash flow? You know, going back to that, if you're managing spending, you know, 85% of your day managing your cash flow, you know, Houston, we have a problem. Uh, if you're spending 85% of your day managing the relationship with your lender, Houston, we got a problem. So, uh, and yeah. if you're, and if you're managing from crisis to crisis, you know, this is, this is all subject matter in the latest book, you know, how did we get here? What is causing us to have to go in and reorganize this business? So those questions again have to be revisited, but now we're revisit we're asking the question and then we're also trying to figure out what the solution is. Sure. And then getting the client to execute. Mm, yeah. Um uh, the engine of commerce for most any business is the sales model, how they say, sell and market whatever it is they provide to their customers. Sometimes there's lacks there can be a lack of efficiency, right? You know, or other problems. Yeah, they're related you know, to that. Cost of sales is one analysis, okay. and I think that uh, you know it, it's, it's a very narrow one. But then you have to look at 
what this company's sales cycle is, how mm. much money are they spending to create that initial contact with what could be a p- potential purchase yeah. of their product or service. And then, you know, what are they, how are they managing that client so that it comes back? Mm-hmm. The and retention the, part of the yeah, equation. How, how is that being accomplished? Mm. And uh, so sometimes there are some sales and marketing model issues that you've got to analyze and they require attention. So there again, it may not be so much financial. It might be more on the manage on, on the model side. Mm-hmm. Is it marketing? Is it sales? Is it management? So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, you need to drill into that. We've encountered uh, situations where uh, shareholders in the company might, because of their age or the chapter in their lives, or they just want to move on, be, be looking for a liquidity event. They want to get out of the business. And I guess that can put pressure on a CEO, can't it? It certainly can. It can put pressure on management, and management then is focused on, you know, and, and, and <laughs> this is sort of funny. It, mm. um, they come to you, the client comes to you and says, okay, well, I've got to take this guy out. And so what I want you to go do is go out there and sell stock in the company to buy this guy. Wait a minute. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's in the rarest of instances where that makes sense. What you want to do is finance management to buy them out, not bring in total strangers to take out a stranger. Right, who, you know, yeah, who you don't know and they don't know your business. It's not just a swap yeah, deal. And it looks yeah. stupid. They yeah. have to understand yeah. that. Well, you know, we just need to get them out. Okay, right. well, I'm glad that he wants to leave and he has good reason to leave. However, <laughs> you know, we've you need to think little, think through. You guys need yeah. to take them out and we need to figure out a mechanism so you guys, you, guys, exactly. Use, so you, use guys. Use guys as the facilitators. <laughs> um, again, back to the engine of commerce. If they've identified an expansion opportunity, they may require new equipment, new CapEx to get to that place, right? You know, sometimes, and one client that we were talking about in the first show, Mm. Uh, on this, the, the, it is clearly a case where one piece of equipment can make the difference in how profitable a company can be. And I'll give you one example going back about five years. This was a manufacturing client, and there was a lot of handwork being done after their particular product was being manufactured. Manual okay. labor, in other words? Right. Okay. And, and, there was um, a, a certain amount of rejection factor that was created as a result of that unmanaged quality control in all that handwork. Sure. And when we really drilled the numbers down and we said, you know, if we take all these bodies out mm-hmm. and remove that part of the payroll, because there was a machine that could actually do what was being done, and we we could actually pay for that machine by year two in full. Okay. Wow. And and there went payroll, there went benefits, there went management, there went and the plant actually could then run twenty four hours where it was only running a shift and a half. Sure. Okay. Sure. Makes so, sense. So that's where where a case where a piece of equipment made a difference. So, so hmm. you you know, and sometimes we've seen this happen where, oh, I need a new whatever, you know, and it's really more ego driven. You know, I want a new battery of servers. I want to you know, I want to make over each workstation. Yeah, it's and like it's the really, ego toy driven thing. You know, guys with their toys and stuff. Yeah, so to speak. And and I was looking at one company, and they they had a server farm, and they said, well, you know, um, we could we could shrink the footprint and and increase this and do this and da 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 da. da. And they're all a bunch of tech guys. Yeah. So that's you know, the language they speak. Yeah. yeah. So I said, uh, what kind of money are we talking about to do this? Right. And I said, and let me ask this, what kind of return are we going to generate as a result of spending mm, this kind of money? That's the re- <laughs> So they said, oh, well, it's going to be about $11 million. And I said, okay, so how much more efficiency do we gain out of that $11 million? Mm-hmm. They said, oh, well, we're just shrinking the square footage. I said, so you're shrinking the square footage from what to what? And it was basically 1,200 feet to about 800 feet. Okay. Right. On space that's already leased anyway. Right. And I said, well, what are you going to do with that? (laughs) Is it, is it less power consumption? 
not really uh is it uh is it faster you know is it a generation or two faster than sure. what we've got right now yeah well it's a little faster and i said so are we charge are we able to charge your customer more no I said, so we want to spend $11 million dollars. on getting just a little bit faster and slightly smaller on space we're already paying for and that we're locked in on a lease for the next six years anyway. Well, yeah, but but you have to understand, this is where the industry's going with this equipment. You not, know? not a truly quantifiable <laughs> ROI, I'd say, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. So you better know why you're doing it and make it... I mean, eleven and million I use bucks that as to pick the, up four hundred yeah. feet or whatever. I, I use that as the uh, extreme example yeah, yeah. of where yeah. equipment really well, didn't make a lot of sense. And it's not coming from a good yeah. place, yeah. And sometimes it does make a lot of sense. The other thing we've talked about before is the top management, or, or maybe the level down from the CEO. You know, you may have to change some people out. There may be some issues. We've talked about it in the context of family businesses. We've, if it's not a family business, there's still maybe people issues or managerial inefficiencies going on as well. Right? Sometimes I'm the boogeyman. <laughs> it's, just, it's just it. There's no other way to put it. And, uh, you know, because I work with CFOs by and large, and, you know, they're usually my principal <laughs> point of contact. Yeah. They're sort of the ones that you have the first opportunity to analyze. Mm. And uh, I've had some great CFOs work for me. I mean, I had one uh, woman, Dora, who was with my dad and myself for 20 seven years wow you know she was uh she's uh, she's not dead she's alive and healthy god bless mm -hmm. you dora uh she watches the program uh she's was was a fantastic guy so i was spoiled by having one of the greatest cfos uh, and she started out as a comptroller and then uh, she became cfo and she was just i mean so detailed so well managed i could ask for numbers and boom you know, hey Dora, what what would this look like if we did this and da da da? Boom! Boom. I mean, it was it was unbelievable. Cash management uh, controls. I remember um, we had an auditor come in uh, and they walked to my office after uh, three weeks and concluding the audit and uh, yeah. and they said we have never seen this type of detail on a set of books. The notes, the footnotes the that's beautiful the documentation the, the her journals were we've never seen it it's fantastic and uh mm. and you know it, it's kind of music you so i so i've been spoiled by working with the best yeah so when i get into an, enge an engagement and i see a cfo who might have been a former cpa or is a cpa and he might have come out of a big firm and he might and he might and he might and, and all this stuff and then I don't see them performing or yeah. really adding value to what management's trying to attempt. Mm. It, it to me that's sort of they are the timing belt in the engine. Ah. Okay. Ah. And if that they're a little sloppy, that means the engine doesn't run really well. Mm. So you really, you know, I I have a tendency to always ask the people question first, find out who's working well find out who is adding value, find out who's, you know, pushing the envelope and keeping pace with the industry. And if they don't, then I'm usually going to the CEO and saying, hey, the reason you got these problems is this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And, and you know, of course, then you got to deal with the emotion of, you know, do I need to fire him? You know, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Because, yeah. They, you know, they're part of your problem. Right. And sometimes it has been the client. That you have to fire. The CEO. Oh. Yeah. He, he might have been the guy that brought me to the table. And it it is the weirdest of experiences to find out that the problem exists solely in the hands of the head dude. Mm. 
And mm. so you can resolve that a couple of ways. You can you can talk to them about you know, hey, we got to gun you up. I mean, we we need to we need to change some of these things. And so then I'll take on a coaching role mm. and an educational mm. role mm-hmm. and kind of give them help them develop the skill sets that can allow them to continue to sit at the helm. And and I've had some CEOs come to me, clients, and say, I'm not the guy, am I? I you know, I'm not the guy to run this company. Yeah, I'm not the guy. Uh, what what do I do? Can you help me find a replacement? Can you wow. help? Can I be the chairman of the company and That's then I huge. bring in a real yeah. manager that can manage? And yeah. so that so you know it's I mean that's another extreme. That's crazy, yeah. and it's not crazy though. I mean, it's wonderful if they get to a place where they get it and they know it. Yeah, and they they can get with that program and get someone who's right more on. appropriate from an operational sure. standpoint rather than whatever. Hal Janine. Hal Janine. Managers must manage. Managers must manage. And not everybody's qualified, even if. They're the founder. Sometimes, you know, I mean, we, you, you read this in the Wall Street Journal all the time. Um, and I can't remember, if, was it Groupon or one of those where the CEO uh, yeah. said, oh, you know, I want to spend more time with my family. And yeah, I, yeah, I think but, was, I, yeah. But, but actually I got fired. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, and, and that was a case where, you know, he could not grow he, he, the the sort of muckety muck stuff shirt that needed to be there and manage the company. Mm-hmm. It's just a different mindset when you're yeah. running a big corporation, yeah. and he couldn't make that transition. And so mm-hmm. the board said, you know, how about you consider a career in hotel motel management? And he did, mm. and went on to something else. So it's sometimes a function of of the size of the business or the complexity the as it grows, the scale yeah. and complexity, All yeah, that stuff. Sure. Um, you know, we've talked about efficiencies in the context of, uh, of, of, well, really manufacturing operations and sort of quantifying where are we losing time and motion studies. All of that stuff could be a, a factor in a business underperforming, I'm sure. Um, and then, f- I mean, really, finally, uh, well, two, two last points for you, George. I want to throw out the, the a capital infusion is kind of like the end of the rainbow but it's not where you start it's it's where you finish isn't it it's where we finish and we typically you know we, we've said this in in countless shows we want to make sure the money goes in the right spots it's used correctly it's exploited mm-hmm. capital is exploited to create those returns mm-hmm. now uh i think people have the misconception about a turnaround that that hey, we're going to go in and we're going to really polish this business up. We're going to scrub it down. We're going to polish it up. We're going to make it look good. We're going to make these changes. And that takes time. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. sometimes the activity of the turnaround itself needs to be capitalized. Sure. Okay. So, So you have to look at that and say, hey, company, can you undergo these changes and do we have the available capital to do that Mm -hmm. and is that something that i need to be involved in in helping you form that capital to turn the business around to fund these dramatic changes that need to take place in the business because we got here for maybe not one reason maybe a bunch of reasons okay so Mm -hmm. it's sort of senseless to identify what needs to Mm -hmm. be done and then not Mm -hmm. do it yeah and so we go back to this point execution right execution Mm. Execution. Can they can they execute? And just behind that, my final point and sort of these bullet points that we're covering around the turnaround idea is management must be willing to change. They must be able to to, to adapt to change. You, it is said emotional. Yeah. It is largely it's emotional. emotional. Yeah. And then there's a certain amount of ego that's mm-hmm. injected mm-hmm. into this. So, okay, first is the admission that we need to change. Second is the admission that maybe some people need to be changed out, removed, you know, their role be shifted or whatever. And then it is, I, you know, can I run this new business? Am I capable of running this new model? Yeah. Am I the guy? Yeah. And, uh, so there's a, there's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very introspective process for management to be able to get into the turnaround mode because you're looking at everything you're looking at management you're looking at marketing you're looking at sales you're looking at manufacturing you're looking at sourcing you're looking at distribution transportation uh capital expenditures uh physical plan uh the quality of your clients Mm. Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. the quality of your client you know am i doing business with the right people yeah 
And maybe I've got a maybe I'm doing business with a few wrong people that are costing me money. Right, client so, quality, right? Get client mm. quality. Got to jettison. You're looking at literally everything, wow. and so everything is on the table for review. And sometimes, you know, people take ownership of certain aspects and ideas within the business, certain procedures, certain properties of the of the um, business model, and they've they've owned it for years. And now you're telling them that's got to change. A little ego, you know, you get a little ego in there, mm-hmm. you get a little emotional, you mm-hmm. get a, you got to admit to yourself that this is why we're doing this is to make the business better. So part, you know, I am the boogeyman. And then part of my role is, you know, continuing to reinforce the idea of change. I have to resell them sometimes on a twice daily basis. As you, know, you talk to them, exactly. remind them that this is why we're this is why we're doing yeah. it, and this is what it's going to take to make it happen. Exactly, that's so cool. What yeah. a fascinating subject to cover, and you know, amidst you know folding in capital formation into this turnaround, these things kind of fit together, kind of like lifting that, every rock up. Mm. That's really what a turnaround is. So we're really in the. Um, excavation business aren't we <laughs> what business capital, are we really in, in capital, capital formation capital and for, capital excavation, excavation. <laughs> George great stuff thanks for a great show great show Dave. folks we'll see great you next show. time remember it's bhcapitalltd.com and we'll see you next time Bye-bye. for more information about George Lovato Jr. and BH Capital visit bhcapitalltd.com check out more episodes of Just Ask George at JustAskGeorgeRadio.com. Just Ask George is produced by Steve Garth and is a production of BH Capital LTD. All rights reserved.